Welcome back to Outdoors with the Morgans. It is a miserable day. Been two straight days of rain and the temperatures are dropping. But I'm on my way over to the uh, log yard over to Adler and Sons. Take a look at some logs. I'm in the market for some white oak and walnut logs and they just called me from over there said they have some white oak in the yard. So I'm going to go over there and check them out and maybe make a deal. We'll see. All right, pulling into Adler and Sons here. There's our firewood processor over to the right. Big more bark over there. firewood This more bark here looks like it got a little bit warm. That's the biggest thing on chippers and grinders. Got to watch for fire. Going good. So this is 1,200 horsepower. Yeah. That's the biggest grinder more bark makes. Yes, from what I was told, yes. More Bark 6600. More Bark 6600. Nice little Vermeer there. Alright, I'm on my way back to the house. I made a deal on a load of white oak logs. I didn't have my camera with me. I left it in a truck. It was uh, raining pretty hard, but you will see them next week when he delivers them. And when I say a load, it's going to be a whole a log truck load of white oak logs. Uh, some are pretty good, some not so good, but uh, the price was right and I can definitely get some nice lumber out of all of it. So that'll be good. But I think the rain is almost over, I hope. If it is, here in a little bit, I'm gonna head down to the wood yard and uh, fire up the sawmill. Look at this. These oak leaves, these are red oak. And there's still a bunch on there. Maybe this evening I will, uh, fire up that big BR-800, get back to work on these things.
Well, the rain just won't quit. I thought it was going to be over earlier today, but it won't let up. I think tomorrow it's supposed to be better, but nothing is as good as this cherry right here. Check this out. This is a 10 quarter piece of cherry, which is two and a half inches thick. Nice live edge slab. This end's probably about 19, 18, now 17 at this end. Down here, a little bit wider. Yeah, 19 or 20 at this end. Really nice stuff. What I did here with this, this is all kind of new to me, this uh, live edge kind of thing. I'm more nice, clean, four quarter, eight quarter. So I stayed away from this center here. Here's the center of the log right here. I'll get some nice pieces out of this right here yet. But I got some six quarter here, another 10 quarter piece right here. And then I'll stand this on its edge and cut this center out center of the pith and get some nice uh, 10 quarter here on the sides as well. So this morning it was about uh, 55 degrees and it has dropped throughout the day. It's down to about 40 right now. I think tomorrow morning we're going to have our first serious frost. I think it's going to be 27 or something in the morning. We'll see. But that's okay because I am ready to fire up the wood burner in the building. I am. Uh, it's that time of year. But man, it changed quick. We went from 70 clear skies, beautiful leaves to this in uh, no time at all. I had some people asking about this. Uh, this is actually a laser can't get the cover off of it man that's tight it's because it's cold but this is a laser that'll cast a laser beam down the side of your log so you can see where the uh, blade is this option on this mill was something that my buddy Nathan from out of the woods says is a must-have but I'll be honest I don't use it I probably should but I don't really need it I don't know Kind of got mixed feelings on this one. Everything else he told me to do was right, spot on, but the laser I could definitely live without. I don't really use it. I found what happened on real sunny days. It was kind of hard to see it on the log, even though we're under a uh, roof here. But maybe if I started using it more, I'd like it, but not really my thing. Levi, he just headed to the uh, post office. We had hoodies for sale, and Melissa made a bunch of them today. She'll finish them up tomorrow. But I'm going to wait till tomorrow morning when he gets back to help me load this stuff up on the trailer. I mentioned the other day, I think in the last video, what we're doing here is this. So this sawmill, the Woodmiser LT50, it's going to start making back some of the money that I spent on it. Well, hopefully it is. We'll see. But I have been selling some lumber, mostly to people that I know, and I've been doing so on and off since I had my first sawmill, the LX150, but we are ready to step it up a notch. I have way more people that want firewood than I do people that want lumber, but that's just because I've been selling firewood for 30 years or whatever, and everybody knows that, and I haven't really been pursuing the lumber sales, but that's all gonna change. I mentioned the other day, my friend Chris Martin, he's got the eye dry kiln and the slab flattener. I've got the sawmill and a source of logs. So we're going to work together to put some nice product out on the market. Like this beautiful cherry, for example. And that's why I went to look at that white oak today. I don't have many white oak logs down here, mostly cherry, red oak, soft maple. And I have a few walnuts I'm going to be sawing tomorrow morning. That'll be eight quarter and maybe some ten quarter. But this will be used for tabletops, end tables, coffee tables, charcuterie boards. Is that is that how you say that? Charcuterie? I don't even really like saying that word. It's kind of silly. But a lot of people like it. So that's the plan for now. Like I said, we'll load this stuff up in the morning. Saw some walnut. Right now I have a project that's going to take me right up until dark. And then some. 
I'm gonna be on leaf detail tonight. We're gonna move the uh, the blue rue out of the way. Now this is a really nice blower, a BGA 86, but this is not the right tool for all these leaves. I'll break out the big one for this. What I've been doing, I start over here, I blow everything over to that fence, and there's some spots where you can blow it underneath the fence, and then the rest of them I take it all the way down to the gate, blow them down into a big pile on the other side of the fence. But with this many leaves right here, I can do this whole area with that big blower in probably an hour. But I'll tell you what, that big one, it sucks the fuel. It does a good job, but it likes fuel. I'm back down at the uh, sawmill this morning. I'll show you what we got going on here. On the trailer so far, I've got some red oak, uh, just a little bit of red oak, some big wide four quarter, and then we've got some nice eight quarter, ten quarter, and six quarter cherry. Some of it is live edge slabs like this right here. That's beautiful, really nice stuff. I got a little bit more cherry to put on this pile, and then we're gonna add a little bit of walnut to it. And then here in a little bit, all this is gonna go to uh, Chris Martin's place, and it will be going in the eye dry kiln in the uh, near future. So sawing that nice cherry I had on the mill, when you're slabbing it, you know, cutting that live edge stuff, what you're left with in the center, well, that's the pith right there. That'll crack and check real bad. So what I did there at the end, I took two pieces off of each side. Uh, this is like 12 quarter, and you would call this quarter sawn cherry because it was in the center of the log. You see how the grain's going this way? Nice stuff. It's heavy. Not as bad as the oak, but uh, it's still pretty heavy. So right now I'm gonna move some slabs down to the slab pile. I'll put this stuff on the trailer and we'll load up a walnut log. We got to uh, let go of that piece on the mill. You can see right here, this is the center of that log. It looks the same on the other end. I did pretty good with this one.
right, I'm sawing this walnut eight quarter, two inches thick. Let's see how wide this is. Down here we're about uh, 17 and a half. Over here on this end. About 21. Beautiful stuff. I love the smell of walnut. It smells fantastic. I got four real nice slabs here now as you can see what I have left on the mill it gets real thin in the middle but there's plenty of usable wood on both ends so I think what I'm gonna do is load these up on the trailer and then I'll take this load over to Chris's place and then either later on today actually probably tomorrow I'll fool with this a little bit and get as much out of that as I can because I tell you what I need to do late today I want to get back out to the uh, mini cabin the rut is definitely on last night I came down here for something what was it I came down to get some gas for the uh, leaf blower and it's just about dark and I'm coming down here in the side by side and right on the other side of those baskets there a buck came right out of the neighbor's yard crossed right here and went down in the valley looked to be like an eight point nothing huge but pretty decent buck well i got my fuel i loaded up some firewood in the back of the side by side and as i'm coming back there's another buck a bigger one same way and they're headed that direction but i've been seeing them all over the place and uh with these cold temperatures i think it might be a nice night to uh sit in a mini cabin and see what we see all right loaded up and uh, strapped down it's not a huge load or anything but uh, this will be a good start see how this goes all right I'm headed to Chris's place he only lives about uh, three maybe four miles from my place I think what I'm gonna do is back up his driveway it may be kind of tough to turn this deck over around up there and when I can I like to back in instead of having to back out just the way I like to do it looking at this this is red oak right here yeah that's correct yeah this is uh, red oak that was milled here locally um, by a guy just right up the road it's got a, uh, a Lucas mill and um, yeah it, I'm, it, I don't think it maxed it out because I th I'm pretty sure he could do like six foot by like 20 or 22 foot long yeah uh, um, but yeah it's a, it's a big old red oak slab that uh, he got several of these uh, milled up he had his big old log and he says that the red oak slabs this this size are great when somebody wants a large slab for a table, but they don't really care what the species is. You know? Yeah. So right. Uh, so they can get it at a pretty good price. Yeah. So, now you have to flatten that, or are you going to dry that one yet? This one's going to be. Uh, we're going to dry that for him. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We bartered with him, so we're going to dry it for him. Um, 
Now he's got a uh, an attachment on his Lucas mill that'll that'll do planing, like a planer attachment. Yeah. So he'll he'll probably flatten it himself, but um, but I'll reach out to him see if we can, because that'd, be, that'd just be really cool to, to throw yeah. on the machine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yours would be way faster than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. Well, good deal. Got a bunch of wood to work with now. <laughs> Definitely do. What's this sycamore? Yep, this is a uh, this is sycamore that uh, that we're going to get uh, flattened up. Another guy he tried this in his Nile uh, kiln, and um, but it's, these are still massive slabs. They're just under twelve foot, and um, he got a mill with around three inches thick I want to say it's roughly some of the, the wider ones you got closer to the to the pith they're going to be closer to 48 inches wide um, and then they kind of flare down to yeah. 36 or so but these are these are real pretty I, I did one of these already for him and then he's going to turn around he wants me to uh, flatten them and then we'll try to get them sold and, right yeah you know, this uh, it's real pretty wood very nice yeah you know, right now we're dealing with metal in it because it was a it was a i guess a yard tree or whatever oh yeah <laughs> yep that's always fun yeah all right man why well, gotta hit the road all right thanks yeah i appreciate you stopping by man see ya